Hello, this is Gloomy Sunday and once again, I will be sharing spooky stories that will send shivers down your thorny spine. Without further ado, let's begin tonight's creepy, spooky, and sometimes outlandish array of tales. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. In the isolated coastal town in Korea, whispered tales spoke of the beauty that lurked beneath the surface of the dark, swirling waves. Villagers claimed the ocean bore secrets too terrible for any human mind to comprehend, and they avoided the rocky shores at night, when the tide brought forth not only the salt and foam of the sea but also the haunting songs of a mermaid who had once been a guardian of these waters. Her name was Sue, a radiant figure of ethereal grace, with long, flowing hair reminiscent of moonlight on water, and eyes as piercing as the depths of the ocean. She lived among her friends, a small pod of merfolk who danced in the currents and crooned melodies that enchanted sailors. The stories told of their beauty drew in many, yet it was their kindness that ensured their safety apart from the gnarled histories of shipwrecks. But one autumn day, everything changed. Beneath a pink-hued sunset, a group of students from a local high school, excited about a dare, set out on a fishing trip. Little did they know that their laughter and recklessness would lead to tragedy. Fueled by naive bravado, they launched their harpoons into the waters, seeking a trophy that would win them fame among their peers. It was a hunt for glory that turned into an execution as they targeted Sue's friends, mistaking their exquisite beauty for mere sport. The sea turned crimson that night, and when Sue surfaced to see her pod scattered and lifeless, rage ignited within her heart. The haunting sobs that echoed through the waves were met by the indifferent splashes of oars, laughter fading as the boys realized too late the gravity of their actions. As she mourned her friends, something within Sir transformed, her sorrow congealed into vengeance. As the moon waxed full and bright, she began her hunt. Using the shimmering guise of a beautiful maiden, she lured one of the boys, Harjun, who had been the most reckless. He was drawn to the shore by the enchanting melody that spilled forth into the night air, a song of loss that curdled into a symphony of spite. Captivated, he followed the sound, unaware of the darkness awaiting him below. With a graceful flourish, she emerged from the waves, her beauty masking the tempest within. Come closer. She beckoned, her voice honeyed yet laced with danger. As he approached, heart racing, Harjun gazed into her eyes, oblivious to the storm of power swirling just beneath the surface of her icy demeanor. What brings you to my shores? She asked feigning innocence. Upon her words, he began to realize his reckless part in the deaths of her friends, but before he could turn, she lunged forward with the speed of a whip. Dark water rushed to claim him. She pulled him under with the force of her fury, dragging him into the cold embrace of the ocean depths. One for each of my sisters! She hissed, her voice echoing in the suffocating darkness. Harjun gasped, his world narrowing to the flickering light above him. He fumbled for breath, grasping for the surface that felt impossibly far away. Sue was relentless, her wrath fueled by the memory of each lost life. For every sting of pain felt by her sisters, she matched it with a sharp pull into the cold, fathomless abyss. As he struggled, images flashed before his mind, his friends laughing, his careless hand wielding the harpoon, the lifeless bodies drifting in the water. Please, I didn't mean to! He managed to whisper, but her laughter swelled like waves crashing on a distant shore. Haunting, bitter, and full of righteous fury. You cannot beg for mercy now! She spat. Her eyes glinted with tears of salt water and vengeance. No mercy for those who revel in cruelty! In his final moments of struggling, he felt the stinging pull of an unyielding current and collapse into darkness. Sue, still consumed by heat of grief and rage, let herself unleash her siren powers. The ocean surged around her, 
And in that instant, the memory of her friends coalesced into a chilling harmony, a perfect pitch of sorrow and wrath. Then there was silence. When the sun rose the next day, it cast a golden hue over the waves, deceptively tranquil. The students found Harjun's boat abandoned, his friends' laughter echoing silently in their minds. They searched for him, calling his name, but as days turned into weeks, whispers grew that he had vanished, swallowed by the depths. From then on, the villagers noticed the peculiar phenomenon at the shore shimmering scales, the gentle rise and fall of beautiful melodies drifting from the ocean's surface, and shadows brushing past as the tide came in. Those who dared peer too closely would find themselves haunted by the strange allure of a song that refracted light like a spell. The town learned to fear the ocean not for the loss of boys, but for the mermaid who danced in its depths, a beautiful spirit turned into a siren of vengeance, forever seeking retribution among the waves, and whispering the names of the foolish who dared disturb her realm. That was delightfully spooky. Now on to the next creepy tale. In the quiet village of Xiaxian, nestled between towering mountains and boundless rice fields, there lived a woman named Mai Ling. At 35, she was a widow, having lost her husband in a tragic accident two years prior. Alone and struggling with the relentless waves of grief, she spent her days tending to her small but vibrant garden. A sanctuary of blooming chrysanthemums and fragrant jasmine. One late afternoon, as dusk settled over the village like a shroud, Mai Ling discovered something peculiar in the far corner of her garden. It was a hole, perfectly round and about the size of a human head, nestled amongst the roots of an old mulberry tree. Its edges appeared almost impossibly smooth, as if carved by a sculptor's hand. Within its depths, shadows danced, twisting and contorting in ways that made her stomach churn. Curiosity peaked, Mai Ling knelt beside the hole, transfixed by an alluring sound, a whisper, soft as silk, drew her closer. She could not understand the language, but the tone was soothing and melodic, like a lullaby on a cool night. It seemed to call, wrapping around her mind like a tendril of smoke. Ignoring the shivers crawling up her spine, she leaned in. Hello. She whispered back, but only silence responded. Frustrated yet enthralled, she reached into the hole with trembling fingers, feeling an icy breeze wash over her hand. A sudden vision filled her mind, a kaleidoscope of colors and shadowy figures dancing amidst a storm. With that, a surge of terror gripped her heart. Ripping her hand away, she staggered back, breathless. As night fell, the whispers grew louder, weaving through the garden like a haunting melody. Mai Ling could not sleep. Drawn by an invisible force, she returned to the hole, her heart thundering in her chest. What secrets did it guard? Come closer. The voice beckoned, now urgent and almost pleading. You seem The darkness wrapped around her, too enticing to resist. Lost in thought, she felt her mind unravel images of her husband flooded her memory, his laughter, his gentle touch. Desperation clawed at her, and she found herself leaning closer, her breath fogging the air above the hole. What do you want? She called hesitantly, as if challenging the unknown. To be free. It whispered back, and Mai Ling was overcome with sadness, an ache she had wished to personify. She imagined a world free of pain, one where her husband still walked among the living. But darkness poured from the hole, swirling and rising like smoke, wrapping around her ankles. Panic surged as she stumbled back, yet the whispers persisted, sweet and sinister, promising her the gift of life and ethereal peace. 
That night, as the moon hung full and heavy in the sky, my Ling made a choice. The shadows had led her here. Perhaps they could lead her back to the happiness she had lost. With resolve, she knelt by the hole once more, heart screaming but mind quieted by this enticing promise. I wish to see him again. She murmured, and the air around her went still. The whispers heightened, echoing with laughter and sorrow. But from within the void, hands emerged. Long, skeletal fingers that grasped her wrist with an unholy strength. They pulled her, and she fell, tumbling into darkness, a void where no light could penetrate. In her final moments, she realized with horror that the promises were lies, the soothing voice a cruel mockery. This was not the peace she had sought, it was a prison of eternal despair. The people of Xiaoxian wondered what had become of Mai Ling when, after days of silence, she vanished without a trace. The garden remained, untouched and serene, but the hole whispered on, dark and hungry, seeking more souls to entrap in its sinister embrace. And as the villagers tended their own gardens, they would hear whispers carried by the wind, faint and distant, echoing the name of the woman who dared to listen to the heart of darkness. I hope you enjoyed our spooky and terrifying stories. Join us next time for more. Take care and boo-bye.